Hello and welcome back to the big board. Today we're going to take a look at Mark Walker's Eisenbank Gap Deluxe. It's going to be awesome. It's the latest and greatest just in the door from Lock and Load. Wait a minute. No, this is the wrong box. Hang on a second. Uh, this, uh, this, this. This is, uh, what am I doing wrong? David Heath, did you send me the wrong... How hard is it to get it right? Uh, there's just no fooling you guys, is there? Of course that was not the latest release from Lock and Load Publishing. Why indeed, it's, you know, ba barely, it pales in comparison. One tiny little box here like this. <clears throat> or this. <laughs> and by the way, I had my arm stretched out earlier on and I... Tried to pick this box up. Well, I actually tried to pick both of them up. That's really heavy. This one I can manage. Uh, but uh, yes, welcome back to the big board. We're, uh, whew, I had a workout, but I obviously needed to do more because this is gonna be some heavy lifting. So let's start with an interesting item. Now, keep in mind, I am not going to uh, go through and do an, an absolutely super detailed unboxing. I'm going to look at the things that I'm interested in looking at because there are other unboxings around and you can you can go check them out and take care of business from there. Uh, this is pretty cool though. This is an optional uh, add-on uh, that I think you could uh, attach to the, 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 uh, the Kickstarter. And, you know, probably the first thing I should mention is... What's today? The 12th of December, I think it is. Hopefully this will get up and posted on the 12th. But you have until about the 20th or thereabouts to put orders in for this game to get the discounted pre-order price on this monstrous, monstrous stack of stuff that you can go see on uh, the OG. The original Grognard has got a, a shrink grip and a couple other reviewers have got shrink grips and stuff like that. Uh, and they're all pre-release copies. This is not my personal copy. What I'll be doing with this, except for the ammo crate, I will be giving all of this away once I've done a playthrough uh, in the next 24 hours. I hope to do a playthrough. And then once the product uh, is released into the marketplace and has started shipping, I am going to do a, a giveaway and I'm going to raffle this off in some way, shape or form. And uh, we're going to have a bit of fun with, with that. I don't know what that's going to look like, but we'll work it out. All right. So that's just your, your heads up. So first things first, the ammo crate. What a great idea. So rather than just ordering plain, boring white boxes from a GMT, here is, look at this dude. This is awesome. Like a little, it's a big three inch deep box with a contents uh, a spot for it on the sides and the front. Uh, over he on here as well. Of course, I don't have a knife that I can open anything with because I'm organized. I got so excited about this. Let's just use my tweezers. He's using the tweezers. So we're going to jump at it. And if my hands shake, guys, trust me, it's not the DTs. I had literally just got back from workout and I can barely uh, stop my arms from shaking, let alone my hands. I am going to have a whiskey in a minute, though. All right, so let's check this out. Just a big, deep box. Oh, I didn't mention. Look at these. Look at these counter trays. How awesome is that? Oh, it's even got LNLP on the inside. And these, yes. I was talking to David about these. One of the things that David, he and I agree on is so far too often. See this little lip right here? So you can get your thumb in here to open these up, right? These lids are not going to come off. They're going to stay on and they're going to be happy. And look, there's two, three, uh, comes with three trays inside. 
I don't know how much these cost. Go look it up yourself, all right? But look how deep that sucker is. Where is a tray? Do I have a tray handy? I don't. I'll, I'll do a comparison photograph later. Uh, you'll be able to see that on the bigboard.com or um, bigboardgaming.com or uh, the YouTube channel or the Facebook channel or the Instagram or it's his ass. You'll be able to see all those things. All right, so uh, there's that. that. So this is pretty awesome. So all the, I, I, we might need this, right? Uh, given the massive number of counters that are going to be present here. So let's put that back on there. Awesome idea, love that. I would use those for many games, not just uh, our lock and load stuff. Right. Come on, dude. All right, this is the solo system, and you guys all know what I think of solo systems. Uh, I don't believe you need them, but if you want them, you're going to have it with this game as well. Now, this is uh, a solo system for Nations at War and World at War. The two systems are completely different, but similar in many respects. I'll say that much. You're going to have cards. And you're going to have uh, more cards and you're going to have your rules for solo assistant and really what all you're probably going to need once you read the rules is uh this behavioral card tracking card tells you what to do when to pull a card what uh, element of the card to look at there's a sequence of play in there super straightforward uh if it's anything like the lock and load system it's going to work pretty well most of the time Full color, large font, lots of important notes. See that yellow? Important, okay? Very important. Keep at it, folks. A uh, bit of advertising in the back. Oh, my arms are killing me. Oh, uh, dear, oh, dear. Right. Uh, some examples of play by the looks of it. So, you know, if you're into solo systems and you want solo stuff here, have a close up look at the card. And a close up look at these cards. There you go. All right. That's awesome. I really, as a, as a, you know, a review copy, I'm excited to get it. I won't be testing it out for you. You can probably rely on the OG or uh, Kyle or, uh, uh Maurice to do it or someone else to do it, but not me. Because I've got to play this. There are 600 counters in here. There are eight geomorphic maps. There's a core manual. There's a scenario module book. There are 16 11 by 17 player aids, and there are five eight and a half by 11 player aids. Yeah, there's not much in this box. It's a bit, bit disappointing, isn't it? All right, if you've never seen uh, if you've never seen World at War before, and you've never played any modern platoon level game before, let this game be your Huckleberry. I've played this in a play test system previously. The system rocks. If you're an old World at War guy, and you're like, I'm not gonna change. I love the old system. <laughs> exactly how it is. Uh, then get over yourself and at least come and play with me and I'll show you why this is better. And in fact, when I play one of the scenarios, I'm going to set up the old system right side by side and we'll play both at the same time so that you will get a look at the, how, the, how the two systems differ and why and why not and the wherefores and the withouts and all that and herein's and uh, all that sort of good stuff. And we'll just have fun with it, right? It's gonna be awesome. Uh, and you'll see, I think, why I am so excited about this particular system and the modifications and the changes and the refinements that have been made. All right, so, uh, so let's see if I can get this box lid off. Comes off nice and easily. Good, fantastically structured box, right? So, you know, uh, we, there are some companies that don't make very good boxes. Uh, you know, Lock and Load makes great boxes. This uh, artwork is very, very cool. I think it's evocative without being uh, clip art, which is nice for a change from some companies. Right. 
these are going to be, I believe these are going to be our formation cards, right? So there's a, quite a few of those and objective cards and things of that nature. We'll talk about those later when we actually play. So let's have a look at the biddies dice. Okay. Module rules and scenarios. So uh, a honker, right? Glorious. We'll get into that in a minute. Let's have a look at the rule book. And then we're going to have a look at the maps and all the, all the counters and good stuff like that. You know, gorgeous presentation. I mean, this is just wonderful. So, uh, now, this clocks in with a lot of pages, guys. But it's, excuse me, it's extremely well organized, first of all. Secondly, you can download a PDF of it and print it in black and white if you don't want all the, the color and stuff. Uh, and what you'll find is that there are a significant number of uh, examples in here that puff this bad boy out. Uh, there's a full starter kit in here. So if I, let me hold this up close to you. So just looking here, right? Uh, you know, how to set up a scenario, uh, a glossary, uh, two page, uh, a two page glossary, uh, design and development notes, an index, which uh, goes for quite a while <laughs> by the looks of it. Uh, at page 122, there's the starter kit. So if you, uh, if you had downloaded the starter kit uh, and printed it off or were using a little Vassal module or whatever the case may be, there's a full set of, uh, there's a full playthrough and look, here you go. This is your starter kit. You could tear all this out and get after it, right? And, and play. Now here's the index, big font, well-spaced. That's why it's as long as it is. So someone did the huge job of indexing all of this, and this is, and these are all things that I'm pointing out to you that really were shortcomings in the older system. There were inconsistencies and poor rules referencing and rules references that didn't exist, and uh, a lack of clarity in some sections. There was lots of to and going backwards and forwards over the rules in the old system, and it was still eminently playable. Uh, and fantastic system all up by itself. What we got here though is uh, updated and revised and refined and a little more uh, clean thinking uh, about things. So it's gonna be awesome, fellas. And the 3% uh, of people who watch are female, uh, ladies. So, uh, you know, line of sight's clearly explained in here. I'm not gonna go through all the rules. Uh, if you've played World of War before, You'll be able to pick this up. You're not going to have to read the whole rule book. There's a five page. What's different from this and the, and the previous system. You go read that, pick this up, have a look at some of the charts that are in here for a second. Let's have a look at the scenario booklets. There are, oh, there's only 21 scenarios. I hate it when that happens. <laughs> look at that. All right, first 10 or 11 pages explain how to set up and uh, module rules for Spetsnats and high rates of fire and night fighting, uh, details around scenarios and all that sort of good stuff. And uh, here's your uh, campaign map. Excellent idea. Let's see, there's just special rules. I'm just looking for the first scenario here. I think it's one of the ones I played at the start. Yeah, so he's T-80s versus M1 Abrams. Yeah, so this is the scenario. I'm gonna set up Storming the Gap, and I'll set that up from the prior um, system, and we will play that side by side, okay? And I'll try and not mess it up too bad. All right, <clears throat> lots of scenarios in here, as you can tell, great clarity in terms of setting up. You can, it's all linked with your campaign and all that sort of goodness. Let's skip all the maps for the moment. Let's have a dig, let's dig in on some of these charts and see what the story is. Because I think that's gonna be pretty interesting. And we've got counters down the bottom. <clears throat> I'm gonna bring this camera down just a little bit lower. My sexy new stand that doesn't balance very well because I paid extra for that. Yeah, all right, that's about as good as I can do here. All right, let's see. 
So there are some, uh, some larger charts that fold out and uh, it's a basically a nationality unit t uh, set of tables that define what all the capabilities are, how many steps there are on each unit. And you can see all this across the top here. I'll read them out for you. Defense type, whether they can transport or not. Can they carry passengers? Do they have an enhanced move and fire? Uh, let's see. So here we've got obviously enhanced move and fire. None for the, uh, what are these guys? These are all infantry. So none for any of these. Missile volley fire. Oh, you can't see. There we go. You can see all these categories across the top. So quick handy dandy reference chart. We flip it over and now we've got all the uh, armor, BMPs, BRDM2s. And I'm looking for where are the tanks? ATGMs. Must be on another chart. Let's see if we can find those in a minute. Here we go. No, no, that's a set of thing. Anyway, I'll I'll come back to that in a second. I maybe uh, that's probably all generic size anyway, because the T sixty two is probably a T sixty two, regardless of what nationality it is. All right, same for the West Germans. We've got all the different uh, units and their capabilities, and uh, different types of uh, formations here, all laid out. This is really well done, guys. Really well done. I am probably going to hack this when I get into it, and just uh, so here's the uh, here's another double chart for the East Germans with the various vehicles and whatnot. So lots and lots of stuff in here. No need to go through all of these individually. A terrain effects chart. Now you can see that this is a large font, right? You can lay it out on the side of the maps or you can keep it folded up to one side. That's really gonna be up to you or I'm sure there'll be guys who'll put this in a piece of uh, sleeving. That would be nice as well. Uh, here we go, another another West German. Maybe I showed you that already. I don't know. There we go. Soviet Union and all its units and capabilities. And then what is this? Oh, line of sight example. Just nice, right? So instead of having to dive into the rule book, you go, ah, now if I got a line of sight from here to there, let me just pick this little baby up and have a look and you'll probably be able to find exactly what you want right here. Uh, height references and all that sort of good stuff. So that's just, these are all just ease of play uh, things that make the game uh, more pleasant and easier to get into. Very interesting stuff. I like the way things are done with lock and log. You know, it's just, just makes stuff, makes it easier. This is just another terrain chart. <clears throat> In fact, is that different? Let me just see real quick. Uh, maybe I put it down. Okay, where is it? Oh, I'm just looking at this other terrain effects chart. It looks like there's two of them. One of them uh, deals with oh, it's additional unit, additional terrain types. Clear, cultivated, rough, city, woods, hill, and then the second one is river, road, bridge, ford, minefield, minefield, random, improved positions. So there's two of them, right? There you go. All this information here talks about the uh, movement cost, defensive bonuses, uh, all laid out for you. Assault modifiers laid out for you. Concealed bonuses, yes or no. Obstacle heights, it's just very cool talk. All right, groovy, groovy. The Soviet Union, I think I showed you that guy. I showed you that guy. I just put all these down here. Now, here are the Battlefield events table, You'll, if you've played World of War before, you'll be familiar with this. Very different events on, on here though. Uh, and I'm not gonna go, we don't need to go into all the detail on all these guys, but uh, you can see them there. Sorry about the glare. Uh, missile ammo usage chart, once again, clearly labeled, shows you what the different icons, the new icons, on the counters are and what they mean. So we might keep that sucker handy when we have a look at the units. Let's flip this over, movement and fire summary. So once again, 
you've got your terrain charts on one side uh, uh, of the board and you've got a uh, what was the other one <laughs> ammo uh, line of sight and now we've got a movement and fire summary chart so probably all I need to do to work out how to move how to shoot right two of the things you need to know how to play a game super now this uh, these are inventory cards for all the different formations and uh, I haven't gone through in detail on reading these sections of the rules uh, because th they've taken a different approach with formation so rather than uh, labeling every individual uh, unit with a specific designation you know the ninth guard tank or you know first cab or whatever you you will take a formation card and it'll tell you what you need to do with it and what units you will need for it and things of that nature and i have not read any of those rules so i'm talking out my backside so here here we go so formation deck we'll go here uh artillery tracks just uh for yeah he dp icms mlrs Oh yeah, gosh, it's just got chemical, ADM, the whole shooting match, right? Smoke screens, not in the bag, there shouldn't be anything. Same for these guys. Oh, weather change tables, if it's required in the game, a battle generator, because in case 21 scenarios are not enough, let's make your own battles. That's gonna not suck. So now we can take Team Yankee, we can take all those other First Clash and all those other books that we've read and we can create our own scenarios. That's gonna be swaggy. Um, okay, modifiers for direct fire, straightforward, cool. If you've played the game before, you'll know all this. It's all very straightforward. Sequence of play chart for you. You're gonna want one of those bad boys. And what's this one? Every die roll in this series, get out. Okay, now I haven't seen this before. This is cool. All right, so it's just telling you the number of dice you're going to roll and what the effect will be. And there's a rules reference, a clearing roll, combat liftoff, chemical strikes, all sorts of good fun stuff in here. Okay, that's all new to me. Haven't seen any of that before. Fabulous. Holding boxes for guys. I showed you the modifiers, I think. Did I do that? Yeah, here we go. All series. Right. So that's all that. All right, let's have a look at the maps because that's really what you care about, right? And now we're at minute 21. That took a while. This is just, <laughs> this is the first box. Uh, let's have a look at some maps. Uh, so they're going to fold out like so. Oh, well, yeah, that's, that's pretty attractive looking. Uh, and uh, there are also winter maps and this is a big city map area I may have got some of these out of out of order here uh, this is map number two some of you who've played before will recognize that bad boy I've seen that a gazillion times Map 45. This is going to be the summer version of that map that we just saw, although I may be holding it up the wrong way. Is that guy? And then there's winter versions of uh, two and three as well. And here's map three. You'll also recognize that map if you've played the game before. And then there are, there, are, there are winter versions, right? Okay. So I'm going to grab all those, fold them over, put them to one side, and let's have a look at the counters. And let's pray that uh, they're all nicely aligned. Okay. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here for you. All right, so. Hopefully you can see those okay. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. How's that? Counter sheet one of seven. So Abrams, and you've got your uh, firing range on the top left hand side, and the uh, number of dice, and you're to hit, and then you've got your little triangle here that gives you your special special ability, 
and removes all the underlines and all that. You've got also uh, then your def defensive die rolls and then um, small arms fire and assault combat and stuff of that nature. There should be M1A ones as well in here because it's it's like a bonus. Bradleys, so you can see the range of the Bradleys here and there to hit your infantry units. Chaparrales for anti-aircraft, Stingers, Vulcans, more Bradleys, M60A3s, all right, and on the back the counters are going to be on the reduced side, you know, it's just going to look like this, right? Now, look at the counter thickness it's substantial these are solid thick they're easy punch pre-rounded it just it just oozes sex appeal it really does so these are uh, some leopards i'm trying to get the leos up in the picture here so leo twos range 14 four dice with three or better to hit great save for them as well and you can see all these other units here as well. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, obviously. And you'll have your reduced mark, reduced sides on the back. And let me see. Now we're getting into some of the Soviets. So I've got some trucks and I've got some ASUs up the top there. Some leader counters. Some Heinz. Some 72s with the 12 range, three dice, and four are better to hit. BMPs, lots of 72s here, BRDM twos. Where are the BMPs with there? Are there's, uh, I'm trying to look through the camera, why am I doing that there? Look at those BMP twos, they have 14, four, four. Very, very nice. But with only uh, a measly uh, two dice and a five or six to save, it's gonna be kind of rough. Uh, all right, now information counters. I'll see if I can hold that back a little bit so you can see it. One of the things you will need to relearn here, although they are they are labeled, there we go, that's all, this is all for artillery. Reloading for missiles, bridges down, etc. Electronic warfare. Soviet units. Now I've purposely not looked at other folks' uh, shrink rips because I, I wanted to see this firsthand for myself because I'm I'm like that hips very cool. Uh, so hopefully I'm not spending too much time on things they they spend time on. Yeah. Now uh, so here's your T62s and uh, T55s, three dice uh, each with a six to hit for the T55s. Thanks for playing. And uh, three, uh, three dice and five or six to hit. So not as good a gun as you as you would have. Uh, well, that's about right, actually. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. You know, it's it's obviously an aging unit, but it uh, also has a you know reasonably decent save on it. So that's kind of cool. Versus the T62s, which have I think had a slightly longer range. I'm just looking at one now. Yeah, twelve and three fours. Uh, so better to hit. Beautiful artwork. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Disruption markers. Oh gosh, yeah, that's very cool. All right. Now, you're, you're, you're how, um, you know, how, one thing I'm going to have to reread because it's been a while is, you know, headquarters and command, and how that all that works, that is different. And it is uh, cleaner and much better. So let me just pop, uh, so we'll get into that when we actually play the game. I'm going to, I think what I'm going to do is maybe, well, what the heck, we'll just keep going, eh? I was going to start another video because this video will now be over three gigabytes in file size. So it's going to <clears throat> break itself up into many small pieces. Let's have a look at the expansion pack, uh, which is even heavier than the last one, last box. 
and uh, that's the Storm and Steel second wave. This package. Oh my God, that's heavy. It has 500 counters, <laughs> 22 maps, double sided. A campaign map. Scenario books, you name it, it's got a bunch of stuff in here. All right. Maps. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Obviously formations, because, you know, the M1A ones are probably in here. Ah, oh, we've got a counter attack of escape. Look at that, T64. Yeah, these 60, yeah, here's the 64s with the 12, uh, 12, 3, 4, great shooter. Those, are, those were T62s we were looking at before. I was a little, I was in the back of my mind, I was thinking, hang on a sec, that doesn't seem right, doesn't seem powerful enough. And of course it wasn't because it was a T62, not a T64. So module and scenario rules, let's see how many scenarios there are. This guy's got six in it with combat, adding combat engineers. Then there's the, dri the drive on Giesen campaign system, which has this little doohickey and a bunch of uh, detail on how to go through that campaign exercise. Wonderful. Then the defense of Frankfurt module and scenarios. So that's uh, let's see, scenario, just two scenarios here. So that, why aren't there 34 pages? Um, oh, I think these are break. Let's have a look. Uh, breakthrough to Frankfurt, page seven. Let's, let's, let's go to the videotape. Let's check it out. Yeah. Okay. So this is, uh, uh going to be a larger battle. Scenario one, the setup is all of this. All right, scenario one, scenario two. So just check this out, right? This is the order of battle for NATO. These are huge scenarios. All right, that's scenario one with the essentials for it. Victory conditions. It's a two, four, six, eight mapper. <laughs> God, it's gonna be so great. Woohoo! All right, let's do that. Campaign map, because you don't just want to have to refer to the book. Look at that. That's gorgeous, too. Sweet. Three days of action. Then more national unit track doohickey things. There's one, two, three, four of those. There's, uh, oh, this is cool. Hang on a second. Oh, one for NATO. One for NATO, one for the Soviets. All right. And then uh, more units, check units, you name it, the driver. So what is this? Um, sequence of play, counter-reference card, replacement tables, air recon tables. Very nice. One for each side. More, more and more and more stuff, right? More of these things, more of those things, a lot of that stuff. Um, gonna put that all on one side. I'm gonna pop the tape on this somehow, like that. And let's just take a look at some of these maps. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Wow, look at that huge city area. Look at that. Very cool. And I, I, look, I'm not going to unfold all these. There's, there's dozens, right? There's maps out here, yin yang, map 48. Yeah, let's open up that guy. <clears throat> wow, look at the woods. Look at the woods. True terrain. Like it feels like uh, ain't a lot of shooting range in there. Look at that bad boy. Oh, that's pretty as well. Now these are gorgeous. These are just freaking gorgeous. All right. Uh, pop that suck, sucker all on one side. More counters. I don't know where that. Uh, so, 
bases. Now, I have I've no experience or exposure to any of this. It's all uh, new to me, so I can't offer any, you know, I can only offer limited insight here. Uh, but it's all the second wave stuff. More units. That's where the counter came from. T sixty four. There you go. All right. So look, a lot of a lot of content there. Uh, and then, oh, I'm looking for I'm looking for my. Yeah, they are. Here's the M1A ones. <laughs> Some guy complained to the designer that there could have been M1A ones. And now there are. Ta -ta -ta -ta. You get one platoon of them, one company of them. All right. Okay. So look, there you have it. Amazing, amazing, amazing bundle of content. Uh, ammo crates, solo rules, maps galore. Uh, all of those maps that you saw, all those green maps you saw, you know, there's, no, there's another one there, it's more open terrain. You also have winter versions of all of them, right? Uh, it is a ridiculous volume of content and I will be playing this for you this week or this weekend stay tuned December 20th I think is the cutoff date if you want to get on get in on this action those diehard stuck in the mud don't want to change guys got the old world at war maybe you saw this and you got a little bit excited you felt a little stirring in your loins now's the time all right let's hit it later